Ravens Wrap is brought to you by Bud Light, FlyLady.net, Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Ravens247.com, the original Green Turtle Sports Bar and Grill, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome back in our playoff edition of the Ravens Wrap Show here on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarvis Rock Radio 93.5 The Beach broadcasting from the luxurious Ravens room at the Blue Ox, 127th Street at Coastal Highway at Ocean City with Ravens Roost 44. Give yourselves a hand, guys. And guys. I got, got some friends in the house today. My, my family won't come down, but thank God for friends. They come down and visit me. You know, yeah, visit yeah, me yeah. So. Mom and Dad haven't come down in four years. Yeah. Mike, we're all family. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. So thank you. Thank you. Hey, I wanna, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, that's the Pittsburgh Pirates team, so we're not, we're not doing Sister Sledge, although they're a Philadelphia-based group. But anyway, uh, we want to thank our friends at the original Green Turtle, the Blue Ox. Bud Light. I would know that. I'm a radio DJ. Bud Light, FlyLady.net, the Ocean City Golf Club. G&G Outfitters, Ravens247.com for now, Comfort Inn, and uh, JCTickets.net. Guys, let's talk uh, playoffs a little bit here. And uh, a matchup coming up that we didn't expect, the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. And here's my, here's my only comment about the Denver-Pittsburgh game. As smart as Dick LeBeau is as a defensive coordinator, I'm kind of shocked with his defensive game plan in that. With the aggressive, the alter aggressive approach that he took, he allowed Tim Tebow to have one-on-ones where a guy beat, you know, if his receiver beats a defender, it's an easy throw. Instead of making him have sustained drives, thrown to, uh, you know, small windows, and, and be consistent, which he hasn't been this year, they didn't do that at all. I thought Pittsburgh, frankly, played right into the hands of Denver. Well, they did. And I think when you have that approach, and when you've got a guy like Monday who was in for Ryan Clark, right. who doesn't have the experience, and you're going to leave your secondary naked like that, I think, and you've got a quarterback who can extend plays, much like their own quarterback in Roethlisberger, Tebow can extend plays like he did, and he finds guys down the field. I mean, I don't think he could hit you with a pass if he, were, he was sitting in my chair, but he can hit a guy 40 yards down the field. I mean, not 60% of the time. That's 10 completions that. for 316 yards, that's amazing. Amazing performance, and I gotta tell you, I got a confession to make. I went, I went into that game thinking logically it would make more sense for the Steelers to win. Absolutely, yeah. Because we wanted to host an AFC championship game, and I thought the most logical progression is for them to go to, to New England and beat the Patriots. Well, I don't think that would have done that. Wouldn't that wouldn't have happened. Not, not after that. seeing that team. Right. But the minute the game started, the minute that Eddie Royal caught the touchdown pass, I knew I couldn't root for the Steelers. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> it was over. <laughs> Let's do it the hard way. <laughs> now, I, see, I'm the opposite. I, was, I wanted the Steelers to win, period. I mean, you know, I, now I went to Lehigh. When Lehigh. you went in or throughout? Throughout the whole time. Really? I mean, it's understandable, though. You want, I mean, the easiest road is to have Not, two home games in Baltimore. That's right. Well, that's that, that logic. The other thing, too, is I, I played at Lehigh. Some of you may know Lehigh Lafayette is the <laughs> oldest rivalry in college football history, period. So, you know, Lafayette, we, we always wanted to kill them. We hated them. It's like Raven Steelers. So, but it didn't matter what Lafayette did. It only mattered what we did to Lafayette, all right? So, so I don't care if they won any other games. So it's the same with the Steelers. I want to play them. I just want to beat them up. I want to maul them again. I just want to Plus, if we would have done that, it would have been in our place. So I wanted to beat them again. And I don't want anyone else to beat them. I want the... I, I don't want that. I was jealous. But I, I was upset. But guys, I, think I wanted to beat Denver. I wanted to win it in overtime. No, I hear, but I think looking at that team, I, I don't see them going to New England and winning. They're just they were just too beat They're up be, in that. Especially now. Uh, yeah, and there's a they lot lost of, three more guys. Right, and there's a lot of second guessing about Roethlisberger playing at the end of the year instead of trying to go for a number one seed. They probably should have rested him against San Francisco, Cleveland. In fact, Roethlisberger apparently told Jim Nance he. he he shouldn't have played against San Francisco. I don't believe a word I mean, that I don't guy know, says. But yeah, I know. I was going to say. It's tough to. I mean, look, look. He's got to have a different color shoe so everybody knows he's got a bad foot. That's true. Yellow and black. Yeah. I mean, if you go on Nike's website, you can get any color and combination you want. But he had to have a different color combination so everybody knew he had a boom well, on his well, foot. Well, enough of Ben. Let's get to some of the other teams here real quickly. New England with a bye. Well, there you go. So, you know, they'll, uh, they'll host Denver in that one. I think that at the you, end of the day. You just shushed me. 
Yeah, I did. I, well, we got to move along here. Uh, you know, so Denver's going to go to New England in that one. I think we all agree New England's going to win. I'm not sure that by 13 and a half, but we don't have time to discuss that. But let's go to the NFC. You like the Giants a lot. They do remind you of that 2007 NFC team. But don't forget, that's Green Bay at home and Aaron Rodgers. I know as good as New York's playing, yeah, that's still Aaron Rodgers. Who's, who's they the, did in 2007 with Brett Favre. Okay. I'm right. calling that the upset special, New York Giants. All right. But it's a better Aaron Rodgers in this game than Brett Favre at the end of his career. That's kind of a trend. But they had a better defense. True. Green True. Bay at that time. True. They, they can run all over Green Bay. It's kind of, uh, kind of a trendy pick, though. No. It is a trendy pick. So but now, I, I so like trendy. I'm, I'm a trendy kind of guy. Well, I'm going. Well, because you're going with the Giants. Mean, you're a trendy guy. You don't, old, you don't like old crackers. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like the old crackers. Well, real uh, quick, how about the Saints? I mean, if there's a team that I, I think they'll eke it out against San Francisco, they, I do believe, can go into Green Bay and win that. I think they're the hotter team right now and probably the healthier that, that's team. That's not going to be an eke out. That, they're going to they're gonna beat up the 49ers. Okay. Okay, I'm right. going with the 49ers. Wow, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Well, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what, though, guys. Of all the teams in the NFC, I think the Ravens match up best against San Francisco and New York. So those are the teams you want to be rooting for. You want Green Bay and New Orleans out. So. Yeah. Especially in the Super Bowl. It's in a dome. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Yeah, good point. All right, more coming up here, our special playoff edition of the Ravens Rap Show on Comcast Beach TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio. <laughs> JC Tickets provides first-class trips to Ravens Road games, including airfare, four-star hotels, game tickets, and cocktail parties. We also help provide great seating locations to all Ravens home games. JC Tickets, where the games begin. Visit us at jctickets.net. G&G Outfitters, Inc. is a premier full-service in-house provider of branded merchandise and marketing solutions. With over 20 years of proven experience, G&G continues to successfully produce branded merchandise for some of the world's leading corporations, associations, and teams. From start to finish, G&G Outfitters is your single-source, one-stop partner for promotional products, logo apparel, and all of your branded needs. For more info on the services and capabilities of G&G, visit ggoutfitters.com or call 301-731-2282. What's going on? We're giving Matt the NFL experience of a high-pressure field goal. Oh, look out! It's terrible, man! There's an easier way to get an ultimate NFL fan experience. Just snap the tag wherever Bud Light is sold and you can win. Bud Light and the NFL. Here we go. Hey, it gets easier. Really? <laughs> no. Are you embarrassed to invite people to your home to watch your favorite football team? Well, don't worry, because you're not alone. Flylady.net is the support you need. Join us and our more than 600,000 members and learn how to crush the clutter and game plan your way through routines that will help you organize your home and your life. Tackle clutter and get your home game day ready with Flylady.net. JC Tickets provides first-class trips to Ravens Road games, including airfare, four-star hotels, game tickets, and cocktail parties. We also help provide great seating locations to all Ravens home games. JC Tickets, where the games begin. Visit us at jctickets.net. And welcome back in our playoff edition of the Ravens Rap Show here on Comcast Speech TV and Delmarva's Rock Radio, 93.5 The Beach. Mike Bradley, Tony Lombardi, and John Gary. Guys, uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, quickly about the uh, the playoffs left over. So, I guess it's, uh, I like New Orleans, DK out over San Francisco. Tony likes San Francisco. You like New Orleans in a blowout. Uh, Giants, Green Bay, who do you guys like in that one? I'm, ten, I'm just glad, first of all, before we get into that, I'm just glad watching the whole Jets thing melt down. Isn't that great? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. I mean, I'm just glad the Jets you are know, one year they're not in. Boom. I was going to bring that up. A lot of guys in the locker room clearly divided over Mark Sanchez, and they're speaking out. I mean, hey, this is what you get, Rex, when you allow a loose locker room like this. When it doesn't go well, it implodes, and that's what's happening. They hire Tony Sperano, former Miami uh, Dolphins head coach, as their offensive coordinator. He's a run-based guy, too, though. I mean, so they got to figure out what their identity is. I guess they're going to go back to running the football more. I don't, uh, you know. Well, that's what Rex knows. Running the yeah. football, managing the, a quarterback that manages the game, 
play good defense. Does that win Super run. Bowls, though? We'll no, see. it doesn't. Uh. It, it, does, it did back in 2000. Right, right. Back and it might even get you to two AFC championship games. Maybe in an extreme, it gets you a Super Bowl. Does it beat, does it beat Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees? No, it doesn't. Not, not in the modern era. No. Just, just goes, or Eli Manning, no. Just goes to show, and I'm one of the you know guys that have been critical and some of the call you know naysayers that call into Baltimore Sports Radio. But, I mean, four years in a row in the playoffs, guys, uh, it just goes to show how quickly it can melt down. So we have a good franchise, good ownership. Uh, Good team, good leadership. So back to the Giants. Uh, you know, t- Tony said it. The Giants are playing great. I like the Giants, how they're playing. I don't particularly like the Giants, but I love the style of football they're playing right now. Uh, I can definitely see them creating some chaos and causing Aaron Rodgers with that pressure, causing uh, him to speed up his throws and disrupt some of that timing. So it's, it's definitely feasible. The Giants can beat the Packers. Oh, the sure, Packers. they sure can. Yeah. But everyone's on the Giants bandwagon because out of sight, out of mind, Packers haven't played in a week. Uh, it took a week off, so it's been a couple of weeks since you've really seen them play. Uh, so I'm going with Packers. Uh, probably double digits. I'm on the bandwagon. Okay. It's a comfortable seat. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony, if they run the ball, you know, down the throats of the Giants, and they certainly are the, down the throat of the Packers, that is, they certainly have enough weapons at wide receiver. If they control that clock enough, they certainly can win that game. I just like Green Bay at the end to pull it out, but uh, that could go either way. I well, guess. I think the fact that they can run the football, that they do have weapons outside, and, and they're playing well, and Eli Manning's playing really well right now. Yeah. They're just, I think, I think they're on the roll. But regardless of who wins, I think it's going to be the game of the week. Yeah, that, that really is. When I said earlier, uh, and Tony's kind of saying, yeah, that's a, just a perfectly structured football team, the way they're playing right balanced. now. They are just balanced everywhere across the board. Running, passing on offense, completely balanced on defense with great pressure. Well, their secondary now is uh, they're coming down the stretch, but they're healthy now. They've been really great well, against the top, top five against the pass the last few weeks. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's switch back to the Ravens. Uh, some big news, Eric DaCosta. And we know this. He, he's frequently courted by many teams because of this organization, how good they are. And he's, you know, Ozzy's right-hand man. But, Tony, some big news breaking with that over the last week. Well, he's going to be a Raven. He's going to stay as a Raven. Now, there's a lot of things going on with Eric. Eric, first and foremost, because I know him pretty well, is a family guy. He's a family guy, and he's got three, chil- three young children, and there's some other things going on that he just wants to be close to his family. So for him to be able to leave an organization like the Ravens, after Steve Bishotti and the organization has given him GM-type money, not top GM yeah, money. He, but, he got know, a pay raise. Though, he right? got a pay raise, and so he's, he's willing to wait his chances because here's the thing. He, he grew up... He cut his teeth with two guys, Phil Savage and um, George Kokinas. Both of those guys went on to become GMs for the Cleveland Browns, coincidentally. And Kikinis those guys, is back with us now, right? he's back, but those guys probably won't be GMs again. So DaCosta saw what happened with his friends. He's not going to make that same mistake. If he goes to another job, it's going to be one of those jobs that's going to be a pristine job. And that happens to be in Baltimore when Ozzie Newsom decides to retire. So he's not going anywhere. I think it's, you know, Steve Bishotti was here last year talking about how he thought that when you build a great organization, people are going to nip at your heels. They're going to want your people. And that's the vulnerability you have with that. You can't stop them. But apparently they're going to just... Keep getting better, and Eric DaCosta looks like he's going to be with us for at least another year or two. Well, that's uh, that's excellent news. Especially draft time. And who knows? We, you and we knew you weren't going to go to the Raiders because they only got one draft pick next right, year. Right, right. Oh, God. They're, they're in, uh, you know, I think they made the right move with Reggie McKenzie, but, they, yeah, they, they're, they've got a long road to hoe. But, you know, the good news for the Ra- I mean, who knows with the Ravens? They win the Super Bowl. Maybe Ozzie decides to step down and go uh, be AD at Alabama. That's long been rumored as well. So if the it Ravens, could be sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think if the Ravens win the Super Bowl, this team could look drastically different next year. They could. I they think could. Ray goes down. I think that Reed retires. Yeah. Matt Burke retires. There could, there could be a lot of people that leave. Yeah, I agree. Um, quickly, got it 60 seconds. Marshall Yonda, unbelievable story about him after the Christmas or Christmas Eve game against the Cleveland Browns. Guy had surgery. He had some sort of swelling, muscle swelling in his thigh that was, they had to cut his leg open in order to, to relieve it because it would have kept swelling up. I think they had to cut some muscle or something. And yeah. yeah, and it cut through the muscle. And during the game, he actually had to, ha- he had stitches that weren't all that tight. And he was in a lot of pain from his leg more so than his ribs. Marciano, one of, if not the toughest guy, and we sure needed him against Cincinnati the week later. Yeah. And the run game, and we dominated, what, 178 yards for Ray Rice. So, well, great job. Bart Scott called him a, a pig farmer with street cred. There you go. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to preview the upcoming playoff game. We're going to get to it, Houston, Texas. We're going to break it down next. Coming up, Ravens Rap Show, Comcast Beach TV, and Delmarva's Rock Radio. <laughs> Radio.
Ravens Wrap is brought to you by Bud Light, FlyLady.net, Ocean City Golf Club, Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Ravens247.com, the original Green Turtle Sports Bar and Grill, and hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill.